white Americans have a criminal history. They have a criminal nation. The nation is built on criminality and murder and exploitation. It is a part of their collective psyche. The United States is a mafia government. No one has done more damage and degradation and murder, rape and robbery than Europeans. Yes, therefore in order to escape confrontation with their true criminal nature, they must accuse others of being criminals. What we call projection. They must become obsessed with the criminality of other people. And black folk become those other people, you see. But as Ken Clark say, uh, Clinton, uh, Clinton Cox say, you call the Indians savages so you can behave toward them what? Savagely. That's the function of stereotyping, you see. If I call you a criminal, then I can treat you what? Criminally. I don't owe you justice. In fact, shooting you in the street is justice. We know you are already a criminal. Why should we bother to take you to trial? Yes, that's what it is. We're doing a service. We're saving the taxpayers' money. What have we lost? A criminal? What are you complaining about? Yeah, this is the deal. What does it mean then? When you can become, then often people, in order to escape certain problems, become obsessed with other issues to the point where they don't have time or the energy or anything else to think about anything else. They don't see anything else. So I can forget my self-hatred. I can forget my self-alienation if I concentrate on how much I love myself. But this is a bad kind of love, you see. It's not the right kind of love. If I concentrate on what? How great I am. If I concentrate on making other people see well, how great I am. You see? And therefore, my 24 hours a day, I'm obsessed by projecting my what? Greatness. And I will end. But that greatness is coming out of what? Hatred and inferiority. And since I'm greater than everyone else, I must make everyone else superior. In what? Inferior to me. In fact, I can only love people who attest to my superiority. I can only love a woman who 24 hours a day maintains my superior ego and states that she is in need of leadership and guidance. And I'm her leader. <laughs> I may be emasculated in the world, but in my house, I'm the king. <laughs> And at any moment she indicates that I have feet of clay, I shall use them to stomp her. <laughs> yeah, this is the kind of thing we have here. Yeah, and it goes the other way, too. You know, make me a goddess and lay at my feet all kinds of sacrifices. Yeah, yeah, live through me. And any moment that you don't hold this up, I'm going to react with anger and call you all kinds of names and problems. That's the issue of narcissism. Then you have the phallic, the phallic character. Flaunts his masculinity through success at work or conquest over women, constantly seeking confirmation of his potency. Identifies himself with his penis. Ultimately, though, ladies and gentlemen, this is a man who's afraid of castration who really thinks his balls have already been cut out from under him. Therefore, he needs a constant confirmation that he has them. Kind of reminds me again of the black and white video. What was that boy trying to grab down there between his legs? <laughs> what are so many black men grabbing that all the time out there? Yes, it's seeing if it's there. Yeah, where is it? In other words, then, that relationship can move into a master-slave kind of relationship. A relationship that tries to use and exploit other people. A relationship that, in a sense, duplicates the 
the social relationship that the that the man has. Don't worry about it. It'll be all right. And then you have people then who have a problem with lovability and are in constant need of reassurance. So what does this all imply? We don't have time to go into it all. What does it all imply? What does it roll out to be? It means then that if we have to transform the relationship between black males and black females and transform the nature of black life, period, we must transform the American system itself. Yeah, you can't get around that. Oh yeah, we have to transform. If we are going to say that living in America, being black in America, creates a good deal of the problems that we have, then we must change America as a part of changing what? The problems. Now, it doesn't, it, it, it doesn't mean that we focus outside of ourselves because one of the best ways of changing America is by what means? Changing ourselves. I've told you before that we are not only the creation of rights, we also create them. That they cannot be what they are unless we are what we are. And therefore, if we engage in self-transformation, we engage in the transformation of the nation and ultimately in the transformation of the world. This is what I'm saying again about an African student education. That that more deeply than all in terms of an African-centric education is that we are not creating a revolution in America as much as we are creating a revolution in ourselves. But that revolution in ourselves is a revolution in America. And that's why we look at ourselves and transform ourselves. It means then that we must gain a perception of what is real. Maladaptive behaviors flow from the inability to operate in terms of what is real in the world. Where are we as African people? What is our real history? What is the real nature of this social system? And how does that reality intrude into our life? We must come to know ourselves. If we do not know ourselves, we lose control of ourselves. We don't know why and for what reason we behave as we do. We must exercise control over ourselves. We must come to esteem ourselves and accept ourselves. To a good extent, the problems that we talk about all the time are problems that flow from people avoiding themselves, escaping their real selves, and creating mechanisms and machinations to facilitate their escape from themselves and using other people and abusing other people in their escape from self-acceptance, in their escape from their real African selves as a people. And therefore, if we're going to stop abusing and using other people and using them as objects and so forth, then we must come back into self-acceptance and come back into reality. We must uh, gain the ability to form affectionate relationships. And ladies and gentlemen, the ability to love and how to love is taught. In this system, we are taught that it's something that occurs accidentally and spontaneously. That is not true. Even romantic love with all of its shivers up and down your spine. And all of this business about you can't eat and you can't sleep and, you know, you toss and turn all night. 